on uh, on off the bench. Coach, good morning. How are you? Jordy, T Bob, morning. We are yes, uh, we are looking forward to these Tuesday mornings, Coach. There's so much that we can get to you and touch you on. Uh, and really, we want to start from a father's standpoint. When you just talk about the football season, you're a coach, you're a father, um, and, and so many uh, so many questions around the stability of the season. Uh, kind of what has been your point of view through this off season and and as the guys move into camp? You know, naturally as a parent, you know, we, my wife and I, you know, we're, we're concerned about, you know, the health and safety of, of not only Derek, but all the, all the players as well. But we know that LSU is going to do the right thing to make sure that those players, coaches, and staff members are in, in good shape. And, you know, it, it's just been one of those off seasons where it's been a little topsy-turvy. Um, you know, from my standpoint, you know, I'm I'm able to, you know, talk with Derek a lot about, you know, keeping his, keeping himself ready. Um, you know, me doing a little training with him during these times, um, just making sure that, you know, mentally he's he's still dialed in. Um, you know, we can't go off of what happened last year, although he had a great year, but you know, this year is gonna be totally different, you know, making sure that he's doing new and new and different things. Um, so outside of that, you know, it was good having him around the house a little bit because <laughs> normally when he's on campus, he's on campus, um, you know, just taking care of school and football. So, you know, different year, um, different times we're living in, but we're all adjusting it's just as everybody else is. I have heard parents talk about, speaking of their their, their, their kids at, at a Division One level, especially at a school like LSU has so many resources uh, and and, and it's, it's such an elite level that they feel more safe with them on campus in the facility than they do anywhere else. Do, do you share that thought? No, I agree with that because because now they're not to say under lock and key, but they're around um, their own environment where you know they should just be around their guys and their coaches and you know staff members. But you you give them the flexibility of just being out and about. You know, they can be around some anybody who who may have you know COVID nineteen or things like that, and then kids are going to be kids. They're going to want to hang out more or, or, or get into you know, bigger social events, things like that, to where you know they may not know that they're contracting it because they may not feel it and have the symptoms, but you know they may have it. Then they do the unthinkable, be around a elderly person or someone with some type of underlying condition, to where then you know that person can catch it. So I like the fact that, you know, LSU is doing it the way they've been doing it by, you know, keeping those guys close and keeping them busy, you know, and and, and LSU is one of the top schools in the country for a reason. And, and that's why their schedules are what they are. Talking to Derek Stingley senior here on off the bench, one of four, five hundred point three ninety four seven ESPN coach Sting, Have you uh, got any feedback from the first couple of days of football school or no? I mean, like, what I is is it a walkthrough? Like, what exactly are they doing right now? Yeah, I, I talked with Derek about it. Um, you know, after practices, he'll we will we'll talk later that night. It's it's mainly just walkthroughs, a lot of installs, individual stuff. Um, just just getting the rust off, making sure that they're all on the same page. You know, new defense. You know, with with Pelini. So you know that that's a difference, and you know. It's just a lot of that. It's not no real competition going on mm-hmm. at the moment. Um, it's more about being in the right place and, and knowing your assignments. Now, what about Derek as a leader coach? And I, and I want to know how much you put on that or or, or don't put on that, right? Uh, because when you look at last year, he is obviously someone that people will look to because of what his play on the field says. Um, we've known Derek for a few years now. He can also be a bit quiet, and it's you know as a freshman, whatever. It's always going to be tough to come in there and, and really say anything. Um, do, do you let him kind of approach that naturally? Do you kind of push him to to be more of a leader? Like like how how do you how do you work with that? Well, you know his he's he's quiet by nature. Yeah, you know he he's not the vocal type guy, but at the moment he's probably the most experienced guy in his in his room, I meaning the cornerback's room. Yeah. And but with him, you know, it's more about he's gonna lead with his play. He's gonna lead how he practices. He's gonna lead on the field of being, you know, ultra competitor and things like that. 
Um, I hadn't forced that on him. I'm not for sure if Coach Raymond has talked to him or Coach O has talked to him about being a leader on the team. Um, but, you know, I believe he can be if that's what he wants to do. Um, he hadn't told me anything about, you know, him being in, those, in that type of position or anything like that. But at some point of his career at LSU, he's going to have to be a leader. So, you know, those things are going to have to come out. He's going to have to be a little more vocal. But for him, I know he just likes to play and, and, and be there for his teammates on the field, on both practice and game field. Uh, freshman All-American, best defensive back in college football, Derek Stingley Jr. His father, Derek Stingley Sr., is here with us, and he'll be here every Tuesday at 8 a.m. as we talk uh, everything. The, uh, he's a coach over at the Dunham School. He's a trainer for defensive backs. Uh, and he's a father, so he's got great insight on uh, on what's happening around sports right now. And take me into the, some of those conversations because Derek is a different athlete. Um, it, you know, he's he, he's going to play a long time at the elite level. When you think about what the schedule is presenting to you and presents to college football, what are those what are those conversations like? Um, I, I know it's not business yet, but the business is the future on on how you guys handle the what ifs. Of right now, yeah. Well, I mean, it's 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 different, mm-hmm. you know, um, because I have to pull some of this stuff out of him. You know, he don't like talking football outside of football most yeah. of the time. You know, he he likes to just be, in, you know, Derek the son or Derek the good friend and things like that. But you know, we are getting closer to where you know we have to start looking at this as a business for him. You know, so. Mm-hmm. We, we we talk about just doing the right things naturally. Um, those things that we're not really concerned with him um, because he's just a good kid. But at the same time, it's like you know, know the people you're around. Understand that you know you have more to lose. Um, take care of yourself. Um, there's only two things that I worry about with him is is naturally he has a hard time sleeping at night. He has so much on his mind to where he doesn't get enough sleep. In my opinion. Uh, and his diet is just stupid, crazy. He's a fast food guy, and that's driving me nuts. And I'm trying to explain to him, "Hey, man, you you, you need to take." I can hear the your... frustration in your voice. Man, he he is all about Sonic and freaking Kings and Chick Fil A. Oh my God! But but you know, hey, they get him to City Cafe on that on that grilled menu, man. <laughs> he, he's young, and yeah, he is. And he has time, but at the same time, we're trying to explain to him. You know, Patrick Peterson would talk to him about the fact that, hey, man, you know, get your diet right now. So, you know, it took me a minute to understand these things, but you know, it's going to create longevity in your career, things like that. And and you know, I, I hate to start looking at the future because I like to live in the now, sure. but I do understand what's 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 ahead for Derek. But you know, we don't want to count the chickens before sure. they have coach what if, like play a game of what if with me if if college football says uh, you know what we're going to suspend the 2020 season until the spring and then we're going to keep the 2021 schedule as as it's written in so potentially a player like Derek could play 24 regular season football games in one calendar year as his dad and knowing what his future could hold what how do you handle that yeah, that that's going to be a tough decision because I can't see anyone playing that many games in one calendar year. Right. And then I would have to um, look at the, the well-being of my child. So with that being said, I don't think that he will be playing two seasons. And and if so, we're going to have some serious discussions with, with some people in charge about you know how we would move forward with that. Right. But. I don't think anyone can play over 30 something games in one calendar year and then get ready for possibly the NFL the following year. Um, you know, I'm not making a decision on that now, but the way I look at it from, 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 you know, a health standpoint, that's just not healthy. So yeah. there's a chance that if that does come to play, that maybe he plays in the spring and sit out in the fall, um, or, or maybe just play X amount of games in the spring, possibly like four or five, and then just sit out from that point and get ready for the fall. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. You know this, yeah, this is new. This is new for a lot of parents or or players that may you know have to make a decision like that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't want my child to play that many games in one calendar year. Mm-hmm. 
talking to Derek Stingley Sr. here on OTB. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, and, and hopefully that's a bridge that no one ever has to cross that we can never have to deal with. And this football season can happen. Coach O sounded very confident earlier at 730. Coach, you've worked with this entire defensive back group. It, it, it's not just uh, your son. When you look opposite of him, there's a lot of talent competing for that other corner spot. How, how, how do you kind of view that race breaking down? I'm just glad I'm not the guy that has to come up with that decision. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, man. I mean, you know, everyone, we all, we all going to say Cordell Flott. You know, we all know that uh, Eli Ricks has a great opportunity of being that guy as well. Jay Ward, he put in so much uh-huh. time, and he made some plays last year as well. And Ray Darius, you know, he came back looking sharp. I mean, good, quick, fast, explosive, all the above. And a lot of people are not talking about him. And yeah. he's, he's that guy as well. I mean, it could be, it could be a position by committee, you know. Uh, I would think early on, early on, I know Cordell may have the, have the, you know, the guy where he would start first, but, you know, those other guys from, from Eli to, to Jay and Ray Darius and even um, the new kid, Dwight, you know, I, I worked with him and, and you know, he's a big, long kid, got good explosiveness, good ball skills, you know, uh, real easy to coach. So it's, it's going to be tough, but, you know, right now I would probably say it's between Eli and um, Cordell is who who will start. And, and it could be a 50-50 race leading all the way up to possibly game one. Wow. Dwight McLaughlin is the uh, is the safety coming in in this class that uh, Coach Stingley is referencing there. And uh, as you hear it, one of the uh, the brightest minds of defensive backs and uh, his son, his uh, his work ethic and his, his play on the field speaks for itself and will have his knowledge every Tuesday here on Off the Bench, presented by our friends over at City Cafe. Coach, good to hear from you this morning. I'll, uh, I'll see you at lunch tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to get there, Jordan. Thank Thanks, you, man. Guys. There he is, Derek yes, Seeley, uh Sr., checking in this morning. Every Tuesday, 8 a.m., your mailbag questions. Remember that uh, that Tuesday conversation with Coach Sting, brought to you by the uh, the good people over at City Cafe, George O'Neill, O'Neill Lane over there with uh, Squeaky Miranda, Cody Miranda, uh, Dirk and the crew. We'll be over there for lunch tomorrow, uh, 1130, if you want to stop in and say hello. Uh, Your mailbag questions next here on OTB.